Tomorrow, Alexander Smirnov has a detention hearing in California. The former FBI informant was charged with lying to the F feds about an alleged bribery scheme involving President Biden and his son, Hunter. Smirnov's statements were at the heart of a House Republican's effort to impeach the president, uh, you know, as we've seen. Pre Smirnov, on the other hand, was arrested again last week amid growing fears that he tried to flee the country. Adding to the mess, Smirnov now claims he was given in information by Russian intelligence, telling federal investigators, quote, officials associated with Russian intelligence were involved in passing a story about Hunter Biden. And yet, House Republicans eagerly repeated those claims. Joining us now is former CIA Director John Brennan. He's an MSNBC senior national security and intel analyst and the author of Undaunted, My Fight Against America's Enemies at Home and Abroad. Welcome, Mr. Director. It's such a Thank pleasure you. to have you here. Um, go ahead, Simone. She's been chomping. She's been over well, here. because, <laughs> Director Brennan, lots have... There are a lot of people now asking, well, did Jim Comer, did James Comer and Jim Jordan know about the, the Russian piece of this? Did they know that the that this uh, FBI informant was, poten was, was l l potentially lying? Um, and does it matter if they knew? Well, I think it's unclear whether they knew or not, but quite frankly, um, based on what I've seen from them, they really don't care if these things are true or not. They will just try to use them to advance their efforts to try to um, undermine the integrity of President Biden as well as to advance their impeachment process. So therefore, they seized upon something that was clearly unevaluated information. It was raw. It was obtained by the FBI. Uh, Director Ray initially tried to resist providing it to the Hill, but then the pressure increased and it was eventually shared with them. But as it's now clear, Mr. Smirnoff is a serial liar. Nothing that he was claiming about President Biden was true. And therefore, I think the whole impeachment effort, which was resting heavily on that, is really quite questionable whether or not it can continue. I, yeah, I, I want to continue down that line because I, I, I'm particularly offended and, and just really annoyed with the constant uh, nonsense coming from leaders who have the intelligence. These are not folks who are sitting in a, you know, in a closet and unaware of what's going on around them. I want to play for you, uh, you know, you've got uh, James Comer uh, uh, talking, uh, he and Jim Jordan talking about uh, this whole situation. If we could just take a quick listen to that. We never knew who the informant was. All we knew was what Christopher Ray said. Now we see that the FBI arrested him for lying. It doesn't make sense. It's not the same treatment that we saw when the FBI figured out that the, the Steele dossier. Who knows? Maybe this guy lied to the FBI. Maybe it's all, maybe they're right. But I just see a pattern that seems to be developing here over the last three presidential yeah. elections. Maybe it was this. I didn't know about that. Oh, maybe the Steele dossier. I mean, it's just the, the sheer incompetence behind what we see these members who are sitting on important committees that have this information. What is the impact inside of the various agencies, our intel agencies, when they see members taking intelligence and using it this way? Well, I think it's very much uh, appalling to my former colleagues who work so hard to try to protect our country's national security. But then we have Republican lawmakers right now who are using things like this as a way to attack the president, and quite unfairly. But also, I think that my colleagues are concerned that the Russians see the Republican lawmakers as tools. They are so willing to accept anything, and the Russians use information operations very effectively. And I have no doubt at all that they're going to continue to use it in this presidential election. And the fact that, that Comer and, and Jordan and others willingly accept these things, and they don't care whether it's true or not, mm -hmm. as long as it's salacious, as long as it's something that they can use, this is something that I think the Russians recognize is ready for their exploitation. Yeah. Bingo. And we heard something very similar from Congressman Jamie Raskin. I want you to take a listen to what he said, and we'll talk about it on the other side. Yesterday's revelations demonstrate that Putin's pattern of interference and destabilization of uh, foreign democratic elections around the world, including in America, has continued to this very day. Um, and this impeachment investigation is nothing but a wild goose chase that is based on Russian disinformation. 
So this is about injecting an element of chaos. We know from the Mueller report 2016, there were signs of Russian interference. 2020, reports of Russian interference in U.S. elections. As we approach 2024, we, we have to presume that there will be similar efforts. Do you feel that the CIA, that the FBI are prepared for the possibility of that type of interference? What are they doing right now? Well, I think they're trying to under uh, uncover all the things that the Russians are trying to do. And information operations takes many different forms. It can be disinformation. It can be fabricated information that is provided to human sources like a Mr. Smirnov. Mm -hmm. It can be allowing the dissemination of information that is going to advance their interests in terms of things that they want to help Donald Trump in terms of his campaign. Also things to smear uh, Joe Biden. So their information operations, fabrication, dissemination, propagation, is trying to influence the attitudes and the views and therefore, uh, you know, the Republican lawmakers who are willing to be able to take this and to use it for their in their efforts, I think it just demonstrates to the Russians that they should continue along this line. This is uh, very serious. I think a lot of times people hear, I mean, as, as soon as I heard the story about Smirnov and uh, the revelations that the FBI had charged him for lying, and then the Russian component, I was shocked. But then you look at the papers or you look at social media, you turn on some... Um, to some cable news shows, and you just have folks saying, oh, here go the Democrats again, screaming Russia, Russia, Russia. But this is a... This is an attempt, potentially. I mean, if, if, if it is true that the Russians fed him this information, this is yet another attempt of a foreign government, a hostile foreign government, attempting to meddle in not just our elections, but truly try to take down the American president. Well, elevate the discourse well, here. And let's layer in the fact that the, this past week, we had the, or we've been reckoning with the death of Alexander mm -hmm. Navalny, and and there has been a global conversation among leaders about the U.S.'s role. And the most immediate to do on the list is to pass supplemental funding for Ukraine. You can't get Republicans right. to do the most basic thing the, and use the most basic tool they have to stand up and say we stand on the side of democracy against autocracy. They are unwilling to meet that basic function. Yes, and it's so appalling that there is growing sympathy within the Republican Party and among the MAGA base for Mr. Putin in Russia. I'm sure Ronald Reagan is rolling over in his grave right now because this sentiment that is, you know, give Putin the benefit of the doubt on these issues. Clearly, the death of Navalny was a result of what Putin has done. Clearly, what's happening in Ukraine is just demonstrating how much, how aggressive Russia is going to be yes. to try to go against its neighbors as well as the West. And also, their involvement, I think, in our election coming up is going to really be an effort by them to be able to bring Mr. Trump back into the White House, because clearly Mr. Trump is very, very sympathetic to Mr. Putin. He's intimidated. He's, he's cowed. He hasn't called him out on Navalny yet. It is just... And the fact that there are so many Republicans in Congress, both in the Senate and the House, that can kowtow to Mr. Trump and continue to allow Russia to get away with what it has is something that is so inconsistent with what the Republican Party has stood for for so many years, but also is so against what our national security really demands, is for us to be able to stand with our allies, yes. NATO partners and others, to be able to res resist these Russian efforts to try to continue to undermine Western democracies. You laid out... Um you know, efforts by the Russians, you know, propagation and disinformation, et cetera. What is the counterpoint to that from our stand? We, we know the incoming. What are we doing to, uh, to deal with that, to address that, whether it is, A, informing up uh, the leadership in our government so that they are aware and then can, you know, do what they need to do via budget legislation, et cetera, or more tactically, CIA, NSA, et cetera, all the other acronyms that are important uh, for uh, this work. How, how do they countermeasure? Well, I think, first of all, they're trying to make sure that from a technical standpoint, the Russians aren't able to do what they did in 2016, mm -hmm. which was to hack into the Democratic National Committee servers, as well as John Podesta's servers, steal emails, and put them out selectively as a way to advance their interests. So the Department of Homeland Security, NSA, FBI, CIA, and others are trying to harden our systems so that the Russians can't do that. Also, though, it's very difficult in a country that really prides itself on freedom of speech mm -hmm. to be able to stop a lot of the lies that go out. It's not against right. the law to right. put out a lie. And the Russians realize this. And the, and the Republicans are taking full advantage of that. 
That's why when I see things coming out from Comer and, and Jordan and others, and, and even Speaker Johnson, I mean, it just, it, they don't care about the, uh, the honesty and the truthfulness of these things. They just want to push out whatever it is that's going to be able to advance their partisan agendas. And unfortunately, the Russians and others, I think, are taking full advantage of that.